right. Hello, everybody. I just want to make sure everyone can hear me. Can you give me a thumbs up if you can? Perfect. All right. Um, hey, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're really exci excited to celebrate Thanksgiving with you and give you great gratitude themed Learn Anywhere lessons, as well as some brand new ELA lessons that you can introduce to your classes. So before we jump into the lessons, I just wanted to share a quick overview of our two ways to code for anyone who might not be familiar with Ozobot just yet. Um, so first, Ozobot can be programmed completely screen-free with markers and our patented color codes. So color codes are a sequence of colors that Ozobot reads and it understands as different commands. So you can make it Ozobot speed up, slow down, turn right, turn left, um, do really cool dance moves, and all of those um, color codes are up on our website to view um, as well. So the second way that you can pr program uh, is through Oza Blockly. That's our drag and drop visual programming language um, with five different skill levels. So um, for example, um, we have skill level one, which is pre-reader. So students who can't read yet can still put together um, programs through pictures. And it goes all the way up to skill level five, which is master mode, um, which uh, has really advanced coding concepts. So students, I would say sixth grades plus, um, can really work with that if they're familiar with this type of coding editor. Um, with Oza Blockly, you can also control Evo's um, movements, lights, sound, sensors, and more. Um, so all of the Ozobot lessons are built on these two different ways to code, allowing you to integrate coding and STEAM into any subject for all of those grade levels. Um, so let's go ahead and um, dive into our ELA lessons now. I'm going to go ahead and hand it off to the EDU team to introduce themselves, and we'll go ahead and we will start with Melissa. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Melissa Tui. I'm a former teacher. Um, I founded a coding, engineering, and design thinking uh, program in South LA. I have uh, coached teachers in implementing computer science in the classroom, and when I'm not at Ozuba, I'm at UCLA. I'm pursuing my doctoral degree in uh, educational leadership where I'm focusing my study around uh, computer science implementation in elementary school settings. So I'm really excited to be here with you all today. Um, I'll pop corn to Jen. Hi, I had to find my unmute button. Um, my name is Jen Maher. I work in the customer experience department at Ozobot. I have many years teaching experience in the classroom, both public and private as a dance teacher for many years. And then also the last few years as a math and science teacher in middle school. And I also am doing curriculum development for Ozobot. I, uh, and education wise, I have a master's degree in curriculum and instruction. And then I will hand it off to Natalie. Thanks, Jen. Hello, everyone. Um, it's good to see some, um, I think, newbies in our participation as far as teachers and then some, some familiar names. Um, so those who are familiar, I'm sorry, you get this intro every time. So you probably feel like you know us real well. Um, but. Uh, Similar to Melissa and Jen, prior to joining the Ozobot team, I spent many years in the elementary classroom um, as a teacher, um, teaching fifth grade, third grade, and kindergarten, and then um, transitioning into the realm of computer science um, immersion and focusing on coaching fellow educators on integrating computer science into the learning of their students, um, K through six, and now work on developing um, that integrated content with Ozobot for all of you um, and your students to use. Awesome, great. So we'll jump into our Learn Anywhere lessons. Um, if you have not used these lessons before, um, we are gonna do a quick overview. If you're familiar with them, um, you do know the basic idea. I'd love to know in the chat if anyone's actually used these in the classroom, in your classroom. Um, let us know in the chat. We'd love to get feedback. Um, we'd love to know what your students like, what you like, um, and if anything needs to be improved, because we're, we're creating all this content for you. And we know it's a really, really challenging and difficult time with um, our current educational system. So we're really looking to design um, content that's useful for you and your students. So what we're focusing on right now as a team is second through fifth grade lessons. We recommend that um, a pacing of one lesson per week, and these activities are about 45 minutes long. Um, we do standards align our lessons to one ISTE standard, one CSTA standard, and one content standard. Um, 
every one of our lessons comes with a traditional synchronous learn, uh, lesson plan. Also, it comes with an instructional video that's student facing. So students should be able to watch this video, self-pace and self-guide and complete the object lesson objectives independently. Now, um, even though we do have that video that's meant to be student facing, if you're a teacher that might be a little bit more apprehensive about implementing computer science and you don't know where to start, you can use that video as an instructional tool to help guide your teaching. Um, all lessons come with a student activity guide. This, all of the content in that student activity guide is covered in the video. We just wanted to provide that extra system of support if you have students with special needs that need um, printed materials um, and written instructions. All the activity sheets come along with each of these lesson packages and all of um, a potential solution or an answer key as well. So you can see here, this is um, very much a traditional lesson plan with all the elements that you would find in like a textbook. Um, and then again, an answer key and potential solution for um, you and your students. And to find these lessons, you can go and sign up for a free account at Ozobot Classroom, um, which is classroom.ozobot.com. And when you log in, you can click on lessons here. And we have an icon that denotes a remote friendly lesson, which means um, it has all of those elements that I just covered, but mainly it has an instructional video. You can see here, this one says remote friendly. It has a cute little house next to it. Um, this is something that we've developed internally and it has that video content to go along with it. You can see right below here, um, there isn't that icon. This is a user generated um, submitted from our community and uh, it doesn't have an instructional video, so that um, icon is not there. You can also filter by remote friendly by clicking um, on that filter and finding all of our remote friendly lessons here. Um, and so I do want to recommend that if you have not checked out our introductory lessons yet, um, we recommend that all students start with these four lessons. Um, by the time they're done, they'll know all the hardware parts of Evo. They'll be able to use all the line following and color code capabilities of the bot once all four of these lessons are complete. And these are in our lesson library as well. And if um, you're interested about learning more and doing a deeper dive into this lesson content, feel free to um, check out our webinar page. It, um, we've had past webinars where we've done deep dives in this content and um, you'll be able to get ideas of how to implement the, uh, these four lessons in your classroom. And again, you can find all of these lessons and our user generated um, lessons in our Ozobot lesson library. There's lots of really, really great content in there. So with that, I'll pass it to Jen, who did a brilliant job creating a wonderful gratitude-focused lesson um, in anticipation for Thanksgiving. So Jen, go ahead and take it away. Thanks, Melissa. So I am going to actually share my camera so that you can see, so that you can see what I'm doing here. Can you guys see my pages? Is that working? No, we see Ozobot as if your camera's turned off. There we go. There we go. Okay, there we go. It just needed a second. Okay, so this lesson is called Gratitude Party. I got the idea from another lesson that I saw. I don't, I can't even tell you when. Um, but basically the lesson is about having students be reminded about what they're grateful for. So they have different places where they, so it comes with two activity sheets. You'll see it has the cutouts. I don't know how well you can see the cutouts because they're kind of light on the page. So let's see if you can see it better that way. So there's some cutouts for a flower and then there's some nets meaning they're the flat shapes that you would use to create a 3D shape. Also a costume for your Ozaba. And then some other places that say, I am grateful for, and they can, uh, that's backwards, isn't it? <laughs> it's inverted. Um, so they can write down some of the things that they're grateful for. So, First thing they'll do is they'll take out this cutout sheet, they'll color in all of those cutouts, and then they'll spend a little time with their scissors. While they're cutting out these items, they can continue thinking about and writing down the things that they're grateful for. 
And I figured you probably wouldn't want to watch me coloring and cutting out. So I've already uh, colored and cut out all of the things on the cutouts page. So first, uh, probably would be to have them put their costume on their Ozobot. You just take it, wrap it around, put a piece of tape on the other end so it stays. That might take a little finesse. So then we've got our, we've got our fun little costume there. I'm grateful for my family. Then once they have all of these items cut out, they will tape some of them together. Then they will fold each item on the, um, you'll notice that there are solid lines and dotted lines. So they'll fold on the dotted lines and cut on the solid lines. So once again, I have actually already colored and folded most of them just to save a bit of time. Um, so I'll finish putting together. So for example, let me show you these nets here. So the net for the cube is this T shape. So once that's folded, it turns into a cube. Yeah. Uh, this shape right here turns into a triangular prism. And then this shape right here turns in, or <laughs> sorry, that's a pyramid. And this is the triangular prism. Got a little ahead of myself. I was looking at this net and picking up that one. So those are the three nets that the kids will create and fold into shape. Let me finish putting this one, taping this one together. And then they have a flower. And so the flower starts out flat, obviously, but then uh, there are dotted lines by each petal. So they'll fold them up a little bit. They don't have to be a 90 degree angle because it's just enough to give the flower a little bit of shape. And then they'll take their map, which I've already put some color codes on as well. Um, and they can go through each item that they're grateful for. So for example, here I put, I'm grateful for good shoes. So I chose a color code, which is the slow speed code because I love to walk in my good shoes. So I will put a slow color code there. Then my flower will actually go here on this little flower shape. And my second color code has to do with my flower. And this is the spin code. So my, I love to twirl flowers. You know, when you get a dandelion and it has the puffy stuff on the outside. I love to twirl those and blow them so that anyway, my neighbors probably don't like me so much when I do that. Uh, sharing the dandelions, but that's what flowers make me think of. And so that's the code I use there. We also have a pause code because I love to stop and smell roses. That's ac I actually do that and my husband uh, and my dog get a little bit irritated sometimes. <laughs> um, and then, so then the nets will go on the a dotted line. There's a space for each one. The cube will go there. The pyramid will go here. And then the rectangle or the triangular prism will go here. Uh, something to note about these is that they need to leave enough space between the line and the shape so that the Ozobot can go past. So you may need to adjust, you know, adjust a little bit where it's glued or taped just so that the Ozobot can get past it. Um, if they end up with shapes that are uh, folded too largely, you'll find that their Ozobot won't be able to pass. So 
doesn't have to be super precise, but if it's too big, then they might have some trouble there. Notice there's also other places for them to write things that they're grateful for. And then their color codes can match what they're grateful for. There's also a color code at the end that I did not fill in. And I'm going to put a win exit code there so that my Ozobot will do a little dance when it gets to the end. And all this while, you, you can be talking about things that the students are grateful for. And yeah, these are some math geometry concepts that they are working with when they fold these and recognize the nets. Um, and this whole idea of a 3D flower is really fun. Um, and really the purpose of the lesson is to remind them of things that they have in their lives that they're grateful for. So I'm gonna calibrate my bot really quick because my light is very different than it normally is. And then I envision this actually like as a gratitude party. So I was thinking like, yes, I love the, the three-dimensional and the geometry math connection, but I was thinking yeah. like they're designing a map for a party. So like those are their decorations for the party. And yeah. then at the party, Ozobot's gonna get to share what it's grateful for. Um, I love how it all comes together. Yeah, the other, another option for, uh, you may wanna have your students share some of the things that they're grateful for or make up a story as their bot is going along to go with the things that they've written in the boxes. Um, there's so many different ways that you can use this lesson or, that's what I was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I, need, I need to turn my cube there a little bit. And at the end, they might want to do their own little dance with their Ozobot. So there you have that gratitude lesson. Um, if you have any questions or comments about this particular lesson, be sure to pop them into the chat or the Q&A and we can talk about those uh, at the end. I have one more lesson that I'm going to share today and that one is called Random Prefix. So this is designated as a second grade lesson, but it doesn't necessarily have to only be for second grade. Um, it, the whole purpose of the lesson is to help students understand how a prefix can change the meaning of a root word. So when you get this particular activity sheet, these particular codes are not there. Those are line switch codes. So your Ozobot will come to the end of the line. And usually if there's nothing to tell it to keep going, it will stop at the end of the line. But these particular codes, they tell the bot to go across the white space and go to the next line they come to. So let me fill in this last code here. And the code is actually on uh, the third page of the activity sheets. There's a, a word bank there if you have students who struggle with English or, uh, or have special needs, you, there's a word bank that they can recognize the words. Uh, ELL students, this might be really helpful for them too, but the line switch code is, is, is listed there too. If you're printing in black and white, we've got these uh, U-turn codes here as well. If you're printing in black and white, you can just have the students fill in the blue and red code on the end and it'll still read it and you turn there. So don't let that, don't let the colors stop you from printing. Um, also in, with this particular lesson, there's a blank template. So all, none of these words or prefixes are here. So you can put in your own words, your own prefixes, 
And then the, it, there's also a blank word bank that goes with that as well. So in this particular lesson, first they'll fill in those line switch codes. Then when they put their Ozaba on the start, it will randomly choose a prefix and also a root word. So they will take their, the other activity sheet, they'll write in the prefix that is chosen and the root word, and then put those together. Then they have to decide if that word that was created is a real word or not. And that's where the word bank may come in handy for kids who struggle a bit. So then they have to answer the question, is it a real word? Yes or no? If no, they'll um, come back to their chooser and choose another prefix that goes with that word, the root word to make it a real word. And then they'll decide if it's a real word, they'll write what the word means. If they had to make up another new real word, then they'll write what that word means. So, and they have 10 opportunities to do that. So let's go through that really quickly. We'll use a different bot this time. <laughs> Turned it off. So my prefix that was chosen is un. And then the bot chose appear. So the word created was unappear. Now, while that sounds really great, it's not a real word. So then I would take my root word appear and I would look back at my prefixes. Pre wouldn't work, un doesn't work. Reappear actually works. So since reappear is a real word, then I need to write what it means, which would be to appear again. Or to show up again. So one thing you may want to do is go through the meanings of the root words, or sorry, of the prefixes. I'm pointing to prefixes and saying root words. Um, go through the meanings of the prefixes because they very often will change dramatically what the root word means, especially un, because it means opposite. Um, yeah. Another thing you could have the kids do is to check off uh, the words from the word bank. And if their robot chooses the same combination of words, they don't have to write it twice unless you really want them to. Um, but they can just start over again. So again, if you have any questions about anything in that lesson, pop them into the chat or into the Q&A and we'll get to those questions at the end of the webinar. Thanks. I'll pass it over to Natalie for a couple of great ELA lessons as well. Thanks, Jen. I was just thinking that was like a great segue um, because although this next lesson um, was oriented with third grade in mind using third grade ELA standards, I definitely see the parallel um, or scaffold between the second grade lesson you did and this third grade. So um, if you are doing prefixes, you absolutely could pull both of these lessons um, to reinforce the concept of prefixes in two different ways. So for this next lesson, um, the students will get two different activity sheets. The first activity sheet they're going to get um, is a blank semi-crossword puzzle. They're not all connected, but um, looks similar to a crossword puzzle. Um, on this activity sheet, it's also going to explicitly state the prefixes they will be working with, as well as the, the meanings of those prefixes. And they will be utilizing um, a word bank to uh, correlate to the map that has some definitions um, that they need to match the word with the definition. So on this activity sheet, um, they also have their color codes key. The second sheet that they're going to be utilizing is the prefix puzzle map itself. So you'll notice um, the prefix puzzle map has the clear start, um, it has the clear finish, there you guys can see it, okay. And then as their bot moves along, 
um, there are eight different definitions to correlate with the eight different words in the word bank, as well as the eight missing words to complete the word puzzle. So first and foremost, the students are gonna complete their map by plugging in um, these color code sequences. All of the students will utilize a speed code, that sh short, super slow code first, to set the speed of the bot. Um, that speed was intentional because the students are actually gonna be racing their bot um, to solve this puzzle. So don't want the bot moving too quickly um, to stress any of the students out and or to make it uh, unattainable for them to complete. As students continue with the map, it actually is um, a loop or a repetitive sequence. At each definition, the students are gonna program their bot to pause because again, um, wanna give the students enough time to read the definitions, think and process the definition. And then after the pause um, throughout, there are some tornado codes. And that's also just to add some extra time for the students to go back, look at the word bank, to think about which word matches the definition, and then also write the word um, in the corresponding puzzle to match the number. So here is an example of the completed map. Um, for this particular lesson, all students will have the same completed map uh, because of the overall outcome or task. And what's going to happen is Ozobot is going to get put on start. And when Ozobot gets to my number one or my first definition, I'm going to read that one aloud. And then I want to try to determine the, the word um, that correlates with the definition. Oh, come on, buddy. There we go. So my number one says not happy. And my bot's gonna keep moving and that's okay. As I move here and I look at my word bank, I'm looking for a word that means not happy. So y'all are smarties. We're gonna say unhappy would be my missing word. So you'll notice that my bot keeps going and the, the race is not for the students to complete um, before it gets to the next word. That would not be plausible. The idea is that they complete the missing word before it gets to the end. So I'm gonna let him keep going while I move this for a second. So I'm gonna check unhappy, I have used this word, and this was number one. So I'm gonna fill it in my puzzle as unhappy. And just to prove to y'all that I beat the bot, he's still going, or she or it, okay. So now that I'm ready to move on to number two, I'm gonna pick my bot up, and I'm gonna put it back on start. And once it gets to number two, that means I can start reading. Um, as we move on, obviously, they're gonna probably wanna read ahead of time. All right, so number two says made beforehand. And if I'm not sure about my prefixes, I can always go back and look at my prefix guide. So the keyword or the context clue word was before. So I'm thinking I'm looking for um, a word that has pre in it. So made beforehand would be pre-made. And that was my answer for number two. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna fill in pre-made. And then again, we're on a roll. Y'all were awesome. Okay, so I will keep going um, until my entire puzzle is complete. Trying to just race the bot and utilize the definitions and those context clues to better understand how prefixes um, change root words. So that is the prefix puzzle map. Again, oriented for third grade, but you could absolutely use it in second grade, fourth grade, um, whatever fits the needs of your students. And if you have any questions about that specific lesson, like Jen mentioned, you can just put them in the Q&A. For uh, fourth grade lesson, Make sure I got all my sheets here. We are moving on to a word relay activity. And this lesson, let's see if my camera will come back in focus. It looks a little blurry. Okay. Um, this lesson is all about homophones. So for this particular lesson, the students are going to be given um, three different handouts. They have map one, 
maps two and three on the same page. And then they have their um, sentence sheet, which depending on your resources, this sheet could be optional because um, the students could always just write their sentences in a notebook or on loose leaf paper. Students first are going to complete each map. So for this particular lesson, zoom out a little bit. I hope it comes back to focus. Sorry if that's a little blurry, you guys. Okay, um, they're going to choose a um, speed code and they're gonna choose a special code to complete every single map. Um, for this particular lesson, I did realize that end codes are plugged in for your students, but as Jen mentioned, um, if you print this in black and white, they can just um, color over or add those on. And just to mention too, um, I know when we feature a lot of our lessons, we do show them in color, but um, if you're unable to print in color, Although yes, those color code keys look really pretty in color. Um, we have the letters below the different sequences so that your students know exactly what the colors represent. So if you can't print in color, then that's okay. All right, so I went ahead and I filled in my maps because um, I didn't want to waste your time coloring ahead. I don't know why this is so blurry today. Um, all right, well, we'll do the best we can. I'm not really sure why. All right, so first and foremost, students are gonna work with the three homophones, there, there, and there. If you decide to utilize this particular activity sheet for them to write their sentences in, um, it does give them the uh, explanation of the difference between these words. So there belongs to them, they're a place or a position, and there they are. So that's just a reference because the students are gonna be creating their own sentences based on uh, the word the bot randomly chooses. So for these three homophones, the students are going to complete the relay of five uh, sentences. And so this is kind of a relay because there's three different courses. So if we think of this map, this is gonna be course one. And if I run my bot, I'm going to place it on the start. I know y'all can't see that. It's going to um, change the speed based on the sequence that I put in. Had a feeling sometimes that back walk gets a little crazy. Um, so I just readjusted it. And the first word that my bot chose was there, T-H-E-I-R. So I would go back to my handout activity sheet for the sentences. Um, or as mentioned, they could easily do these on loose leaf or in a notebook. Um, and I will say um, their dog barks loudly because you might have heard my dogs and I apologize <laughs> if you did. Okay, so now I would run my bot again. I'm going to put it back on this map and I would continue um, until I've completed five different sentences. So we'll run it one more time just to see which there it chooses. Man, I swear it worked once. And this time it randomly chose T-H-E-R-E. -E. So I would come up with a sentence. Um, I have a ball over there. And then I would continue and I would do three more sentences using there, there, and there. Pretending that I finished that part of the relay or that course, I would move on to course two. Course two is working with the homophones two, two, and two. And what's great is once you've explained to your students how that first course worked, it is the exact same process for the others. So I chose a different special code and a different speed code to complete this map. And then my bot's going to randomly choose uh, one of those homophones, since I do have those intersecting lines and I have not told the bot where to go, um, which makes it a little bit fun and exciting for your students, you never know. And then I would do something about um, the number two. I ate two cupcakes. Okay. And then I would move on to my third course once course two is done. And for course three, there are only three sentences just because there's only two homophones 
um, then and then. So that is the synonym, or no, that is the word relay using homophones. The next lesson is about synonyms. And again, this lesson was oriented for fifth grade, but you can plug and pull um, depending on the objectives of your students. Because as we know, the objectives are scaffolded, specifically thinking about Common Core. So you can use these to introduce or reinforce. For synonyms in action, um, the coding is a lot more open-ended. So the students will be utilizing a color code key to demonstrate with their bot the meaning of two synonyms. So this particular activity does have um, a few different sheets, and I was thinking about this after the fact, but um, with the sentences on them and then a space below the sentence for them to create their color code to demonstrate the words, you very well could just give the students uh, either all of the sentences that we've put together as examples, or you can even utilize your own sentences if you have certain words or vocabulary or spelling words that you want your students to know uh, to complete this activity. And then students can just use blank white paper uh, to do their maps. So for example, looking at this first uh, sentence, I know it's hard for y'all to see and I'm so sorry, I don't know why it's so blurry. So Priyanka ran swiftly and swiftly is the word that's highlighted in a different color. So Priyanka ran swiftly trying to catch the ball. So I'm going to go up to my word bank and I'm trying to find the synonym for the word swiftly. And here I'll put in my synonym, which is quickly. And then below, I'm going to come up with a code using my color code key to demonstrate the meaning of swiftly and quickly. It is instructed for the students um, to utilize a loop or a uh, line lines that will show a repetition or repeat the sequence. So I believe in the video, um, we utilize the concept of just the shape of a rectangle so that the students can show their definition or their meaning over and over. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put in the color code um, for quickly. So I'm thinking I'm gonna do turbo. So I'm gonna put in this sequence blue, green, blue. I realized my uh, boxes were not quite equivalent, so I need to fix that and connect my rectangle. So then as I run this code to show swiftly and quickly, I can place my bot somewhere on the rectangle. And once it picks up that color sequence, oof, and it didn't pick it up. So let me try again. It might be my, my user error because my boxes are a little off. Let's see. Ugh, yes. That's all right. So I'll just flip it over and we'll try it again. See, that's what happens when you rush, right? Okay. So we're going to try blue, green, blue. And now hopefully, if all is well, I jinxed it. There it goes. Now it's moving swiftly or quickly around that rectangle. And I mean, I can, we can watch it go as long as we are entertained, but we'll move on to the next one. Um, so the next sentence is, I know y'all can't see. Okay, Emmett was excited to go to the party. So I will go back to my word bank and I will find a synonym for excited, which is delighted. So I would go ahead and I would write the word delighted. 
and then I would come up with my color code sequence. Um, to avoid having errors in the code, like I did with the first sketch, I would have your students use pencil first. I probably should have demonstrated that. Um, and then I like to actually just put boxes so that I try to make sure that my colors are the size of my colors are as close as possible so we don't have the issue that I had before. And then for my delighted, I would probably use a uh, tornado code so that my bot can show um, in excitement, changing from a slow spin to a fast spin. So again, I'm going to, depending on which way it goes, it might flip. And then again, for this, the students were encouraged to do a rectangle just so we can loop or repeat the action of the bot to really um, see the meaning of the synonyms. So you could e easily use do this activity similar, um, not with synonyms, just with regular vocabulary words, um, or again, spelling words, if you wanted your students to demonstrate uh, maybe the meanings of words. It's kind of fun to see how they interpretate words using color codes. Um, so here's our bot showing excitement or um, being delighted. And if you have any questions, just pop them in the Q&A. So thank you, I'm gonna pass it back, I think to uh, Melissa or Tara. I'm not sure which one of you all are taking it back. Uh, let me get to that slide. I believe Tara is going to talk about the one-to-one -one program, but I will mention before Tara um, gets there that um, in our slide deck, we are going to be sharing uh, this on our webinar page. And if you've opted in to get our recordings, you'll get the slide deck and we have a link to all of the lessons we covered today um, in this deck, along with um, a recap on how to use the lessons on our blog and uh, a recap on how to use those introduction to color codes lessons. So um, all pass it to Tara so that she can talk about student view and our one-to-one -one program. Awesome, perfect. Okay, so first I wanna say a big thank you to the entire EDU team for creating these amazing lessons. Uh, me and my Evos are ready to have our own gratitude party at home. So um, thank you so much, you guys. I know you've put in a lot of hard, hard work on these. Um, okay, so let's go ahead. Um, I'm gonna walk you through student view. This is something that is uh, brand new with the recent updates to OSBOT Classroom. If you use Google Classroom already to help manage students and assignments, this is what your students' experience will be with these Learn Anywhere lessons that we've just covered today. So um, before I dive in, one thing I want to highlight about Student View is that we are a Google for Education partner. And um, Student View leverages our deep integration with Google Classroom. So you don't need to create any new OSBOT accounts or passwords for students. All they do is simply sign in with their existing Google Classroom accounts. Um, we're also working on uh, more integrations beyond Google Classroom. So if you're using Schoology, Canvas, Club, Clever, um, please share that with us and let us know so that we know uh, which LMSs to prioritize um, and get up and running quicker than others that aren't being used as often. So when you create an assignment in OSBOT Classroom, students will get a Google Classroom email notification about their new assignment. And I'm gonna share my screen so that you are able to see what that looks like here. Okay, so this is the email notification that the students um, will be receiving. And they will um, click on open and it will prompt them just to sign in with their Google Classroom account which I will do. And then it brings me automatically to my assignment. So this assignment is introduction to OSBOT, gets no Evo. And I'm gonna click on this link, which will direct me into OSBOT Classroom and the assignment um, that my teacher has just sent over to me. Um, there is a little uh, note for you about how long the um, a lesson or activity will take to complete. And there's also a pop-up that will appear. It didn't appear now because I've already updated my bots, um, but it's really important for your students to make sure that their bot is updated before they continue the lesson. So um, 
that pop-up will pop up. And then um, if they haven't updated it, they can go through that process or they can click that they're ready and um, they can go on to the, the next portion. So here it gives an overview of what the students will be learning. So in this particular lesson, they will be identifying and labeling the hardware components of OSBOT EVO. And then it will let them know all the materials needed for this lesson. So they will need an OSBOT EVO, a pencil, and then it's optional to have crayons or markers. And then their get to know your bot activity sheet. And a lot of, um, schools or districts are handling it different ways. Some schools are printing out the activity sheets and giving them to the students ahead of time. Others are requiring them just to print at home. So if you are printing at home, the students have the option to click on this button and just um, print right there. So I'm gonna click on next and it will bring me into the instructional videos. You'll see that this particular lesson has a series of eight um, very short instructional videos that the students will work through um, and they will have that activity sheet. Melissa, for example, is explaining in this first video what EVO is. She's going over um, the activity sheet and then she will also um, cover what materials they'll need again so that they can visually see that they'll, they need some markers or they need um, a pencil. And then as they work through these different videos, they'll just um, complete that activity sheet until they've they've watched the last video, they'll click on next, and this is where they're able to submit their work. So they will take a picture of that activity sheet, um, they'll upload it right here, and then they can also add any comments. Um, and then they submit it over to you. And then once you receive it, you just log into your Google Classroom account, um, you can review all their work, you can grade the activity, um, you can send back and forth messages to the students, or if they just really had a difficult time with that activity and didn't understand it, you can completely reassign it to them. Um, you can see over here in this corner, um, a list of the activities that have been assigned to me. Uh, right here, I'm pretty late on this one. It looks like it was due September, so I need to get going on that activity. And then of course, the one that was just assigned to me and the students can also see which activities they have already completed. So that's just a quick overview of um, student view. And we'll go ahead and pop back up the slide deck for you. All right, perfect. So. If you wanna start impacting all of your students wherever they are, if they're in a hybrid um, situation at school or even if they're um, in the class, we definitely recommend taking a look at our new OSBOT 1-to-1 program. So this is how it works. Uh, each student gets a bot uh, for hands-on engagement at home or in school that comes in like a nice protective case. It comes with the Evo, the markers, a little charging cable for them to charge at home. Um, and then um, teachers also get a two-year license to the OSBOT classroom, uh, to OSBOT classroom. So um, that includes access to all of these ready to run Learn Anywhere lessons, which are standards aligned, remote friendly, and um, in an instructional video form. And then schools also, uh, or get the ability to track student engagement, even uh, when students work beyond screens. So uh, we'll go ahead and click on the next slide and we'll go over, oh, did we miss one? Yeah, okay, funding sources. So um, we do get a lot of questions from educators um, about funding. I know there are a lot of schools that have very limited or tight budgets. Um, so we definitely wanna help you out. Um, we have a lot of resources, funding resources, such as federal funds, state funds, um, and grants um, that are available to you that we can help you out with. Um, for example, our program counts under the CARES Act, so you can definitely apply for some CARES funding to be able to purchase the one-to-one -one program. So we definitely uh, love to assist you with this. Um, what you can do is you can book a discovery session to get an in-depth demo of the one-to-one -one program and tips for funding um, that program tailored to your needs. So you'll see there's a link right here on the slide deck. You can click on that and it will direct you to the hybrid program page. And please enter your information for that one-on-one -on -one demo. You'll be connected with your state's um, account executive and they'll be able to walk you through uh, a more in-depth um, demo on the one-to-one -one program and the two ways to code and then help you out with any funding questions that you may have. Um, so that was it for uh, my portion. Uh, it's now time to hop on into the Q&A. So I'll hand this over to Melissa now. Great. Thank you, Tara. Um, 
Erica has a question. How do you get the Ozobot to move when the sensors are covered? And um, Jen, I think, would you be able to speak to that question? I can actually. I'm going to share my screen and show you in Ozobot Classroom. Well, the bottom line is if you update your bots through Ozobot Classroom, it should put them all in classroom mode, which turns off the sound. So when you have 18 bots turning on in your classroom, you can actually not hear anything because they don't make any sound. It also turns off the sensors. So I'm going to share my screen really fast, not that button. And if I click on the right thing, it will actually uh, share with you. So once you're in Ozobot Classroom, can you guys see my screen? Are you still seeing me? Yes, we can see it, your screen. Okay, so once you're in Ozobot Classroom, you just log in and you'll come over here to Devices. Once you click on that, you'll come to this screen. And if you just want one single Evo to um, be connected, you can click here. If you have an Ozobot Classroom Communicator, this will be, will be available to you. If you don't have a communicator, you can actually, do we still have our um, communicator request form up? Anybody know if that's still available for people to request communicators? They come in the classroom kits, all the new classroom kits. Um, right. I'll look for a form right now to see if we still have one. Um, otherwise, they can just reach out to sales at ozobot.com um, okay. to find out how to get that. Yeah. Perfect. So if you have a classroom set and you have your communicator, make sure your communicator is actually plugged in. Sometimes if it's just plugged into your computer, there's not enough power going to it. So plug it into a wall or a, uh, an actual outlet. Sometimes that is really helpful. Um, then when you click the pair now button, it will make, ask you some questions. The bots that you want to work with or that you want to update all need to be plugged in. And you can work with up to 18 at a time. If you have 24, you'll need to put the extra ones aside. Um, so work with 18 at a time. And you will just follow the on-screen instructions. Um, I don't have that many Ozobots around my desk right this minute. so. Just make sure your communicator is on and then it'll walk you right through. But that's where to go is over to this devices tab. If you just want to set up one single Evo, you can do that. And I have one that I can do here right now. And it'll pair. Nope, need to charge. It needs to be on the charger. Then this particular pop-up will show up. If you're wanting to uh, connect with your communicator, this will say OCC instead of OZO. That's how you can tell whether you have your communicator or your bot. So you just click on that, click on pair, and you're ready to go. You should see the list of OZOBOTs if you have your communicator out and you have more than one that you're working with. It should they should just be listed here. It'll show their battery life, it'll show their status. This particular one has already been updated. So here I could rename it or I could disconnect it. Otherwise it will show uh, that it's updating. So that's, that's where you go. Have any questions about that? Another place you can tell if your bot is connected is up here in the right hand corner. If that little bot is teal, you're good to go. If it's red, you're disconnected. So I hope that answered the question. For the people in the chat, Jen, um, for people who don't have their communicators yet, they can still do it in the app, right? The Ozobot Evo app. They'll just have yes. to go one by one. That's correct. That is correct. Yep. And in the Evo app, you actually have to go into, I believe it's more info. 
let me pull up my app really fast. Do we have time for that? <laughs> yeah, if you want to quickly go over that, I think it could be helpful. Yeah, for our so audience. if you go yeah. into more info, do you know what? I'm. Hmm. Do you guys want to go to another question and come back to me? Sure. The next question <laughs> is from Casey asking, does the video explain what a prefix is for the random prefix lesson? And I believe um, Natalie and uh, Jen developed that lesson, but I will say as a general overview, when it comes to our Learn Anywhere lessons, we do front load any information that your student needs to know. Um, and, and, and if it's a pretty in-depth skill or concept, we do make a note of that for to um, ask teachers to cover a skill or introduce it before the lesson. But for most majority of our lessons, we do front load any information that um, students need to know in order to be successful. Um, Jen or Natalie, I don't know if you have any more thoughts or anything else to chime in on in regards to that question. I was gonna say the same thing. I mean, anything that's specifically related with definitions, we include all the definitions more so focused on the vocab. Um, I would say we're very explicit with vocabulary and then like a very brief overview of the concept, like Melissa said. So if you really are trying to dive deep, depending on the usage of the lesson, um, if you're using it as a review, then we do know, you know, you might want to introduce the concept beforehand. Um, but a lot of our lessons are, are versatile. You can either use it to, to introduce the concept itself um, and then dive deeper later on with your students, or you can use the lessons um, as a review after you've taught concepts in a different, different manner. Casey has another question. Uh, how does the bot know to choose something randomly? Um, I don't know if this is referring to a color co or the line drawing or something else in particular, but if uh, Ozobot comes in an intersection and there's no direction code, um, color code that's listed or drawn out, the bot just randomly chooses. So um, if there's no color code turning it, telling it to turn right, left, or straight, then uh, it'll just choose randomly. Uh, that's how the base behavior is created in the Ozobot. Um, Mallory is asking the pairing feature in uh, Classroom, does that work even if you don't have the paid version? Um, so Ozobot Classroom is completely free. Um, so you can log on to Ozobot Classroom, create a free account and um, be able to utilize the lesson library and um, utilize the, um, the device management as well in Ozobot Classroom. We are gating um, the Learn Anywhere lessons in the future. Um, Cassandra, I don't know if we have a hard date of when those lessons will be gated, but some of our Learn, um, some of our Learn Anywhere lessons will be available um, regardless if you have a paid subscription or um, a free account. Yeah, for now we really want to support everyone and um, have those Learn Anywhere lessons all available uh, until at least um, early, late this year, early next year. Um, but our not remote friendly Learn Anywhere lessons will always be free. So there's still plenty to access. Great. And Jen, should we uh, come back to you for uh, the app? Are we able to get that? Yes. App? So once you log into the Evo app, the Evo app is available for iOS and Android devices, phones, iPads, um, other types of tablets. Once you download that from your chosen app store, if you log in to, you can create a free account. Be aware that that account is separate from your classroom account. They are not connected at all. So you wanna, uh, even though you could, you probably use the same login and password, they don't share information. So uh, if you just want to put a single bot into classroom mode, you would log in, you would connect your bot to the app and it walks you through all of that. Then you would click on the bot, which shows up in the middle. Can I show you that? So you would click here on your bot. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. And it shows you some options. You want to click over on the left. <laughs> Keep hitting the wrong thing. 
where it says more info. And then it says classroom mode right there in the middle. You want to make sure that is checked. If it's unchecked, it's not in classroom mode. If it's checked, it's in classroom mode. And then you would just hear up, hit apply and then your robot is in classroom mode. And that's all there is to it. Um, there was one other question, I think, in the chat um, about how do you label your bots to tell which one is which? So how do you label your bots to tell the difference between them? You're muted, Jen. Thank you. Uh, my bots, I just took a Sharpie and wrote right on the bot. And I just, I, I just number mine. That's number three. That's number four. <laughs> I did the same thing. So I wasn't sure if there was another, that's what I did. I just Sharpie numbered them quick and easy. Yeah. Stickers yeah. are a great suggestion too. If you wanted like those little round ones, um, if you don't want to write right on the bot, but I Sharpie mine too. <laughs> All right, great. Um, so I believe, did we, answer all the questions. Uh, I think Q&A was answered. Was there anything else in the chat that came up? Um, I think we got to everything, but if anyone has any more questions, they can reach out to support at ozobot.com at any time. Um, always happy to help. Great. Okay, so now we are going to move on to our giveaway. Um, Tara has been such a wonderful guest host today. Um, Tara, we would love for you to choose the winner of our uh, giveaway. Um, so the way that that works is that when you put in your information, um, it went into Google spreadsheet and uh, in the order that you submitted your information. So um, Tara, if you could choose a number two through 36, we'll uh, be able to announce the winner. Ooh, okay, so I am going to say 16 because my birthday is on the 16th of this month. Yay. Um, the winner is Sue Price. Congratulations, Sue, and happy birthday, Tara. Yay. Happy birthday, Tara. <laughs> and um, Sue, if you could email Cassandra at ozobot.com to claim your prize, um, we'll get that kit to you as soon as we can. Congratulations. Um, again, uh, just to wrap things up, thank you everyone for spending the evening with us um, or afternoon with us. Uh, if you'd like a PD certificate for today's uh, webinar, you can email support at ozobot.com. If you'd like an email um, of this recording, uh, you can opt in for updates at ozobot.com. And uh, we have links to all of our remote friendly lessons that we covered here today. And if you'd like to know more about going one-to-one -one with Ozobot, um, you can go to ozobot.com forward slash hybrid. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us today. We know it's that time of year where things are just getting real, uh, real tough and um, we appreciate you taking the time, spending it with us and spreading steam um, to your students and making sure that they have an opportunity to engage in really meaningful learning. Um, feel free to reach out anytime you have questions and have a wonderful evening. Bye everyone. <laughs>